Hey guys, it's Bill from Blender Brit, and today we're going to take a look at using Substance Painter with Blender. Um, if you've not heard of Substance Painter before, take a look at the link at the bottom of the video. It's a brilliant application. Um, the actual usage of Substance Painter I won't be covering today. There's, there's a load of tutorials out there, some actually done by the company that makes it. Um, and, and they're going to be better at it than I. But there isn't much out there about using it with Blender, and until recently it was actually quite difficult. Substance Painter used to use a uh, metallic glossy, is it? Metallic glossy workflow? Metallic roughness workflow, sorry. Um, that is used in Unity for uh, and other game engines and various other things. Um, but it, it doesn't work particularly well with cycles. The, the textures that it exported, um, you couldn't just plug into cycles and expect to get great results. You had to do quite a lot of playing around. But in Substance Painter 2, they've, re they've released a, a diffuse specular workflow, which is very similar to what we use in Cycles, and it's a lot easier to, to use the two together now. So I figured it was time to, uh, to show you how. Let's say you've got a model that's all finished, UV unwrapped, like Sintel's bag here that I've, uh, <laughs> that I've taken. Uh, you do need to make sure, I can't stress enough, that the UVs are done nicely. If you have trouble with UV unwrapping, um, watch some tutorials, get it done right beforehand. Once you have got to that stage though, it's time to move to Substance Painter. So I highlight everything, click File, Export, and then Export by FBX. Uh, make sure that Selected Objects is ticked. Aside from that though, all of the default settings for the export uh, are perfectly fine. Give it a name and save it. Uh, at that point, we'll jump over to Substance Painter. What I'll, what I'll show you here is how to load the object in, the right settings to use. Uh, I'm then going to jump to a time lapse of me quickly painting it. Um, not particularly well either, but, uh, but certainly good enough for for demonstration. Uh, and then we'll jump back and uh, do the exporting and put it back into Blender. So to bring an object into Substance Painter, you just go File New. Make sure under template that you're using a spec gloss workflow, not metallic and roughness. Select the FBX that we just made. Uh, the normal map format, I found uh, OpenGL works best with cycles. Um, I couldn't tell you more than that. I, I just tried the two and OpenGL seemed to, seemed to give better results, so we'll use that. Um, I typically use the max resolution for textures, but I did notice it was slowing uh, my machine down along with the, the screen recording so we'll, we'll just hit 1024 for now and then you hit OK. Give it a second it will load in the uh, object selected as, as well as the, the materials that have been assigned. Um, I, I've made five here just basic uh, placeholders so we can so we can use it nicely in Substance Painter. Okay the first step before you get, get excited and start painting away is to bake the textures so as long as that's not going to take too long, I'll do that before starting the time lapse. Let's have a look. Click Bake Textures down here. Bake Textures again. Um, yeah, that's probably going to take a while because I've got to do it for all the materials. So at this stage, I'll jump to time lapse. And here we are zooming along. Um, <laughs> the reason you bake these maps uh, at the start uh, or in general is Substance Painter needs to use them in its smart materials. Uh, when you add things like mud or fabric or anything, it uses these generated maps to calculate certain effects and whatnot. And that's why you need to do the baking. I mean, as you can see here, it is ridiculously easy to quickly throw together a, a good looking model uh, in Substance Painter. You, you, you gotta try it, it's really good. Anyway, let's jump back to, uh, to normal speed. Right, so once you have your finished painted model, it's time to get it back into Blender. So make sure you've saved up your project in Substance Painter, then click File and Export Textures. By default, uh, the default configuration for the export uh, is Document Channels plus Normal plus AO, which is perfect for what, we're, for what we want to use. It's worth noting that if you're using other engines, there's, there's actually presets for all sorts, um, r ranging from game engines to uh, to other rendering engines. Cycles not included, surprise, surprise. Um, but worth noting that, the, that there's quite a lot in there. And it's very possible that Cycles will be added uh, either by the company or by a, by a third party. So keep an eye on that. Um, 
so for each of our materials it's going to generate all of these maps not all of which we'll be using today we're keeping the node groups quite simple and um, just to give you a, a nice start um, but, but they're the maps that it will be uh, generating so we're going to have quite a few maps there to play with um, only other thing to check on here is where you put the textures and the type of file now by default it's PNG though I have noticed that PNG files from Substance Painter don't get on too well with Blender for some reason so I have no idea why um, so I switch this over to TIFF uh, JPEG works just as well as well after you've done all that hit export and wait a while because it, it, it does take a while to export the textures especially if you've gone for um, quite high resolutions on some of the items I've already done that however so we can skip that step for now and I'll get us back into Blender. So the first material we're going to work on is the the actual bag itself, the, the green bit here. Now for each of these materials we're only going to use uh, three of the textures that were generated. Like I say we're going to keep it nice and simple. So I'm going to use the bag diffuse, duplicate that down, Ooh. if I click on the right thing I imagine. Uh, we'll use the bag specular and then we'll use the bag uh, height. We're going to use a bump map rather than a normal map um, simply because you get e easier nice results without having to, to fiddle around um, at least in my experience so that's what we'll stick with today. Okay let's start building up the shader so we'll put the diffuse into the diffuse shader no shock there we're then going to add in a mix shader mix that diffuse with a glossy we're not going to use the specularity map just yet though because it's a, a fabric material therefore we do want some uh, some sort of Fresnel effect so we'll put that in first for that sort of material 1.6 value should be fairly good 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 yeah, yeah, that's good. Duplicate the mix shader. Feed the bottom, uh, sorry, feed the, the first mix shader into the bottom value of the second mix shader. And then the diffuse shader into the top value. And then after, I always put in like a color ramp or maybe a multiply node when I'm, when I'm using a map like this. Um, that you can just feed the map straight in. But just, just to give you more control, I would recommend doing that. Drop that in there, and then bam, that's our material starting to come together now. So we've got diffuse and specular done, and now we'll do the bump map. Little tip here um, if you hold down shift to draw a line through one of these noodles, it gives you a, uh, a, a control point that you can then branch off from handy to get into the habit of doing in case let, let's say I decided actually I don't want to use this height map I want to use a normal map I'd bring in the texture I'd bring in the normal uh, node and then I only have to connect it to that uh, whatever you want to call it blob bit <laughs> uh, without having to reconnect it to all of the different shaders so nice little habit to get into and that looks a bit on the harsh side so we'll turn this down to about a point maybe take that up to a point two let's take a look uh, yeah that starts to look quite nice good so with our first material now done um, I'm not going to make you sit through all of the other ones because the rope and the sleeping bag is exactly the same the only one that's a little different is the metal so I will do that one and then I'll just I'll, I'll render out an image to display at the end of the video that'll probably be better so we'll need uh, three of these again add shader glossy I'm actually going to take the diffuse shader out completely and just use some glossy shaders I think that might actually work quite well. No, 
No, I'm talking rubbish. I just remembered that I've put mud and stuff on the on the metal, so we will need that. Okay, so let's bring in these new textures. It's going to be metal diffuse, metal specular, and hopefully metal height. Good, it's behaving. Dump that in there. We'll go straight for the color ramp because we don't need a Fresnel value really. There we go. Give that maybe a value of 0 0.02 because it's metal. You're going to want some quite sharp reflections, at least where the glossy areas are, which is pretty much what we get in there. Yeah, that looks quite nice. And then it's just the the bump for this one. Bam and bam and bam. Turn that down a bit. Maybe up that a little. Most of these numbers, uh, it, it's a matter of feeling around. In fact, in its current state, without without a dedicated cycles export, you're going to find that to, to recreate the exact look that you've got in Substance Painter, you are going to have to do some feeling around with the nodes. There's, there's no quick solution at the moment. There's no sort of downloadable node group that you just dump the textures into and it will work straight away. Um, there are a few node groups out there for the old workflow. But the same rule applies that they that they don't work 100% out of the box. They always require some adjustments. Uh, so in general, I would recommend doing the nodes yourself, do them manually, and get the exact look you're after. Um, so what I'll do now is get this rendered, and we'll see what it looks like when all the materials are in there. Right, so after a few more material nodes... Um, that's the uh, the finished result. It's fairly close to what we had in Substance Painter. Certainly, Substance Painter looks a lot, uh, <laughs> looks better. Um, one issue I have found that does take a lot of tinkering is getting the the bump values out of Substance Painter and into into Blender. I've used a combination of normal maps with the height map, just normal maps, just height maps, um, and it I haven't found a a solid method that, that that works every time which is why it's not been done in this tutorial uh, it is a matter of playing around until you get it right at least at the moment hopefully that will improve in the future but even with that added difficulty of having to mess around it's still an amazingly fast way to get some really good looking textured materials on your objects as i'm sure you'll agree Anyway, that's all for today. Um, I do have a longer tutorial coming out in the next week or so. Something to look forward to there. But for now, I'll see you later.